Let's get started with a thought experiment. Now, you know what that is. That means that you use your imagination. You pretend. So let's pretend. Let's pretend that you're not a dentist. Let's pretend that you don't work for a dentist. Let's pretend that you have nothing to do with the dental industry, that you're what we sometimes refer to as a normal person. You're a normal person like this woman here. So she's new to town and she's looking for a dentist. So what's she going to do? Well, if she's like most normal people, she starts like we always have with the referral. So she asks, she asks her friends, she asks her neighbors, her relatives, her trusted coworkers, who's your dentist? And she, in fact, gets two great referrals, Dr. Baker and Dr. Adams. So now she has to give them a call. So she needs a phone number. Is she going to look them up in the yellow pages? <laughs> of course not. Don't be ridiculous. She's going to Google them. And she does. First of all, she Googles Dr. Baker, and this is what she gets. There's no web page. There's health grades and, and Yahoo and ZogDoc. You click on ZogDoc, there's not even a phone number there. So now she Googles Dr. Adams. And this is what she gets. A nice, well done, professional, attractive web page answers all her questions, and sure enough, there's the phone number and the address right up on the front page. So she makes the calls. First she calls Dr. Baker. The phone is answered by a great front desk business administrator who knows what she's doing. She's wonderful. She's been there forever. She knows her job. She loves the, doc she loves the doctor, loves the patients. She makes the appointment, answers all the questions, and then says, oh, by the way, please come in 15 minutes early to fill out the paperwork. So she calls Dr. Adams' office. Once again, the phone is answered by a very competent front desk business administrator. She answers all the questions, makes the appointment, and says, oh, by the way, anytime you want between now and your appointment, just go to our webpage. All the forms are there. You can fill them out, and we'll be ready to go when you get here. So she goes for the appointments. She gets to Dr. Baker's office, and after they do all the paperwork, they get her in this little tiny room, stick some cardboard in her mouth, and then run from the room. Sometime toward the end of the appointment, Dr. Baker comes in with the radiograph and says, uh, see this? I'm kind of worried about that. Can you see what I'm talking about? Well, actually, you can't. She goes to Dr. Adams' office. She gets right in. He put a little sensor in her mouth, exposed that in one, two, three, four seconds later, there's the image on the screen. You can zoom in, zoom out, easy to see. Time for the examination. So Dr. Baker grabs one of these. You know, an explorer? It's basically a sharp stick. And she starts poking the teeth. Back at Dr. Adams' office, he takes this little glowing wand, runs it around the teeth. It actually detects changes in the teeth. It actually detects changes in the crystalline structure of the enamel. OK, time for some dentistry. Goes to Dr. Baker. He prepares the tooth for an on light. He's good. He takes his time. He's very careful, very precise. Then he fills a mouthful of goo. She gags for six minutes, pops it out, throws a temporary, and says, come back in two weeks. At Dr. Adams' office, he also carefully prepares the tooth, puts a little camera wand in her mouth, takes a three-dimensional image, and actually makes the on light and delivers it that same day. So now the question is, who's the better dentist? Who's the better dentist? Dr. Baker or Dr. Adams? Now, if we put our professional hats back on again, we have ways of determining that. Starting, of course, with the most basic, what's their level of clinical skill? Can they really prepare those teeth well? What's their level of clinical judgment? What's their level of integrity? But I would submit to you that that patient has no way of judging those things. The patient's going to make that judgment of who's the best dentist based on her experience. What was it like going to those different doctors? How did she feel? And based on those criteria, I don't think there's any question whatsoever that she is going to determine that Dr. Adams, the high-tech dentist, is the better dentist. Technology matters. Technology makes a difference right now in how your patients perceive you, and it will continue to make a difference in how you treat them now and in the future. 
The future is coming, and it will be amazing.